Hey guys, welcome back to the show. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about trading mindset and what you should do if you're not in the right one. We're also gonna talk about ways to be more productive and getting rid of that old mentality of work hard until you die. Originally, I came in today, um, I haven't done any analysis today because this was gonna be a non-trading day for me. This is one of the rare days where I did not pass my mental check. Now, I'll get to your question, Amari, in a little bit. But we don't talk about this a lot because it's um, very rarely do I have days like this. Um, and, and Michael Lamott, and, and you guys are familiar with Michael Lamott, we, we, we brought him in a few years ago for one of our workshops. We should bring him in again. He's awesome. Um, he is a, he is a great dude. Um, if you hear, if you know my story and how I, I struggled for two years, um, it seems like nothing. He struggled for 10 years in trading, 10 years, 10 years. And now he's uh, obviously a consistently profitable trader, a successful trader, works more in the, the stock side of things. Um, and he's a mindset coach. Um, and he's really big on this as a, a, you know, a daily mindset check where you make sure you're in the right position to trade. And this morning I was not, right? So I did something really dumb yesterday. You, you might've saw it on social media. I did a milk mile. I would highly recommend that you never, ever in your life do a milk mile. It was horrible. The images and videos will live on the internet forever. Um, it was just bad. I, I don't know if, you, if a milk mile, if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of like a beer mile. We couldn't do it because we were on a dry campus. Um, but basically, we run a mile, which is four laps around the track, and... Every lap, you drink a glass of milk. So you drink a glass of milk, you run a lap. You drink a glass of milk, you run a lap. You drink a glass of milk, you run a lap. You drink a glass of milk, you run a lap. And then if you're like me, you find a trash can and just projectile vomit. Um, and you, 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 you pay the ultimate price for the rest of the night in the morning. So I did not pass my mental check this morning um, because I could barely stay at my computer for five minutes at a time without running to another place catch my drift. Um, but I do feel better now. So I am, I am back in trading mode. I do feel better now. I just haven't done any analysis this morning because I had full intentions of not doing anything, <laughs> of not trading. Um, but it's important that you do that mental check because if you're in a bad, if you're, if you're bad physically or mentally, you don't want to trade. You got you to gotta understand that trading is like, um, you, you need to be in tip top mental condition and physical condition to trade because if not i mean the, the smallest mistakes are what kill us as traders <clears throat> the smallest mistakes of overlooking something or getting emotional and, and and stuff like that um i just got a response by the guy in the dollar index as well um but the smallest mistakes are kill us so if you're in a bad mood if you had a bad breakup lack of sleep you're not seeing things correctly or if you're physically there's an issue it's just going to increase the chances of you making a mistake. And when you increase the chances of you making a mistake, you increase the chances of you losing money. And, and, and that's something that we never want to do. So if you if you don't pass that mental check in the morning, the best option is kind of, you know, the old saying, when in doubt, stay out. Um, and there's no there's no shame in that. Sometimes you're going to miss a trading opportunity and it sucks. Um, but you got to think of the other side. Of, well, what if I do something stupid? What if today's the day I do something dumb and blow my account? And that's something you don't want to happen. Now, typically, if you're a longer term trader, it's not not as crucial because a lot of your trading ideas were set up beforehand. Um, but especially if you're like actively trading, doing active analysis of the market, it, it can be pretty tough. So that's very important. Not really talked about enough, um, but it is. Joe said I had about a month ago. I had to step away for a few days. Yeah. And, and you know, taking a break is, is, is good as well. I, I think who was it? Um... Who was I talking to over the week? I'm not sure if it was Mike Bellafiore or Dr. Brett. I think it was Dr. Brett Steenbarger who talked about, he, 
or no, 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 Denise Scholl. Denise Scholl, um, she took, um, she's a, 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 a kind of a, a, another mental coach with trade and trade psychologists. Um, she took two weeks off for vacation and she said, I, I never, I never felt more refreshed in my life. I recommend that for everyone. And taking it, taking a step back is, is massive to, sometimes, especially if you're, if you're, you know, I listen to a lot of you guys accountability sessions and you're, you're in the live room, you're back testing when you're not in the live room, you're going through courses, like you're, you're, a lot of your life is engulfed in, in trading and you're, and you're not, you're finding that there's not enough time to do everything. And that could be overwhelming. We, we do have to remember to keep that balance where it's like, Hey, take a day, take a day and just be like, Hey, this is, this is going to be, you know, Sunday, not doing anything trading related. Real quick says, George, uh, a lot of guys I speak to feel guilty for taking a day off as they feel like they're supposed to do something. My argument is, well, if you uh, if you don't, if you're not mentally right, you're going to do all you're going to do is spew out garbage. and You'll have to redo all the work again. Yeah, it's it's quality over quantity, George. Yep. I, it's funny. I, I, I you guys know I coach track and field um, and. A lot of high school coaches are, I coach at the college level, a lot of high school coaches are horrible. They don't, they don't know what they're doing. It's not necessarily their fault. They don't know any better. They're, you know, a lot of them aren't, you know, they're teachers and coaches secondary, but a lot of them don't know what they're doing. So they kind of go by the old philosophy of like, I'm just going to run you into the ground until you feel bad, right? Just like some people that lift weights, like my, my buddies are like this, I hate it, but they're like, yeah, I'm just going to lift weights until my arms feel sore and dead. And I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. And I'm like, well, that's not the, I don't know what your goals are, but that's not the proper way to progress. Like you're, you're doing nothing but hurting your body. So whenever I talk to these recruits, I tell them that my philosophy is quantity or quality over quantity, where it's, I want to, I want to do a workout. I want to do a workout to the point, And I, I want to stop before the quality re- reduces right until you have a bad quality of workout right because after that we're just doing nothing but hurting yourself if, if you are tired and your form is going to crap and we keep running you're just doing nothing but making yourself worse and then we got to take time off you might get hurt and you got to redo the situation so yeah it, it's the same thing if you're doing low quality work imagine like writing a low quality paper your teacher is going to give it back and they're going to you're going to make all these corrections right you were better off just waiting until you felt better and doing it the right way um, but I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the mindset that our society is in. I think it's the, it goes back to the whole mindset of like, we have to grind every day, no days off, right? What's it called the, is it something called the 5am club or something like that. Someone asked me if I was part of that earlier. The 5 a.m. club, I got to wake up 5 or 4 o'clock. If I'm, if I'm not waking up 4 o'clock every morning, then you're slacking. I tried waking up 4 o'clock every morning. Man, the quality of my work went to crap. I was burnt out by 8 o'clock. Right? I was unproductive for the rest of the day. I'd rather get a few extra hours of sleep and be productive for the rest of the day than be part of the 4 a.m. club. Right? So it's, it's, I think we're brainwashed to, it's, it's weird. We, we, we want to work hard, but I think we've been brainwashed to work, to work hard too much and forget about balance. And don't get me wrong. There there are periods in your life where you have to get after it. Like, again, I I was one that when I was learning how to trade, there was a, there was a sense of urgency, probably because I quit all my jobs, um, where I was 12 hours a day on the charts. 12 hours a day on the charts. So I, I, I get it, but you got to look at my situation. I was 12 hours a day with nothing better to do. So I was still sleeping at night. I was still going to bed at 10 or 11, waking up. I wake up six o'clock no matter what, waking up six o'clock. So I'm still getting seven hours, six, seven hours of sleep. I just did all my work during the day and I would take breaks. I'd take lunch breaks and blah, 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 because same thing like you said, I, I would back test and I would go on like five hour binges of back testing. And I would notice that I was making all these mistakes because I was fatigued and tired and, and whatnot. And I would have to go back and do my back testing again. So I learned and I'm still learning to this day to balance, but I learned like, hey, I do like one year or like, you know, depending on what time frame, three months and then take a break. Three more months, take a break. Right. But yeah, I do think, I do think that's a bigger problem where we don't believe that we need time off. That brings up, man, we're getting a lot of rants this morning. 
that brings up a cool experiment um, they did over in Japan. Um, I read about it last year where they, they added they added an extra off day. I think it was the, the, five, the four day work week. I don't know if you guys ever heard about that. Where they gave you an extra day off. But I think they added two more hours. Oh, no, was it that? Was it the four day work week or did they did they reduce the... Gosh, I'm trying to remember because there, there are two different studies. Um, but I, I think I think the one in Japan what they did was they reduced the work day. So instead of like your normal nine to five, and they took like two hours out of it. But what happened was people became more productive. There was another study that was done with where they took a whole a whole day off and added and added time. Um, but yes, I mean. We, we were debating the other day about um, they used to have like a, like what siestas where the whole everything shuts down at 12 o'clock you just mandatory hour off I don't think that's a negative thing we, we do that at our school where every th- they do it once a week every Thursday they have something called the common hour where I think every Thursday you're not allowed to schedule classes or, or most most classes aren't scheduled between I think like 12 and 1 o'clock and it's just supposed to be like a mental break day for for students. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a big yeah. Time, I think time off is key, um, and ev- everyone's different. You know, some people are workhorses and they can get after it. Some people need more more time off. Um, Bobby says just going back to shorter work week quickly. Um, it was Iceland done. Okay, so Iceland did the shorter week. Japan must have did the shorter hours during the day i think japan did a five hour work week that sounds some for some reason five hours stands out what's it called jamal if you remember jamal he was a member for a while he was actually over there um he, he's based in japan he was there when they when they were doing it and he felt so much more productive and the study said that it eliminate it, it eliminated some of the dumb stuff like like meetings you guys ever been in a meeting and you spend the first hour of a meeting talking about nothing that has to do with the meeting? Like, despite me doing all this rambling here in the live room, like, if it's a meeting, like, I just want to, just, let's just hop right in. Let's just get to the point. I don't want to do any small talk. I don't really care. I don't care how you're doing. I don't care about the kids. It sounds bad. I do care about the kids. But for meeting purposes, like, let's just get to the meeting. Um, I, I can, we can talk about the kids after the meeting. Um, but yeah, but it found when we were doing that, there was no more small talk in the meeting because they had so much time scarcity. They're kind of like, Hey, let's just get right into things. Or people didn't dilly dally in between their tasks where it wasn't like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to check out something on the internet before I finish this report. It was kind of like, Hey, like I got to finish this report right now because I got to get everything done in five hours. And people ended up being a lot more productive, um, with their time. So that was a cool study. What they should do is they should make a shorter a shorter work day and a shorter work week. <laughs> then we'll be and Im- just implement a, a a Pomodoro technique for everyone. There's just there's one main bell that goes off in your in and it's 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 synced. Everyone's synced on the same bell, and every 25 minutes, boop, and you have to stop. Your for everything shuts down. You have to stop whatever you're doing and just take a five minute break. <laughs> That'd be horrible. Picturing someone working on like an oil rig and then like, oh, what? Well, can't finish closing it. Got to take this five minute break as the oil spews everywhere and the ocean catches on fire. Um, so maybe not a great idea for everyone, but for some people it could work. I've had a lot of conversations the other uh, over the past few days about weird stuff. I, I met up with my friend Bob Vasile. I saw him twice in the last five days, which is odd. Um, he's, the, he's the one that's a, he's a TED Talk organizer. So whenever I meet him, I mean, he gets to spend time around some of the most brilliant minds in the world. So we just talk about so much cool stuff. Um, it, it's just, it's, 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 I, I, I feel so much smarter when I'm around him, um, which is, which is really cool. So I got to see him twice. So we had some really good conversations. Now he's, he's, he's kind of on the opposite side. He's kind of like, he's old school. He's older than me. He's like, just work hard until you die. And then when you die, bring yourself back to life and work hard some more.
Hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, do me a favor, give me a follow. Also, leave me a rating review. Also, make sure to share this on your social media uh, platforms, right? Spread the word about what we're doing here at the Trading Coach Podcast because each new person you impact allows us to create some really cool new episodes for the show based on the questions that they have for me.